Today I'm going to show you guys how to set up Google Ads conversion tracking on a Shopify website that will track a specific conversion value, a variable value, because not every time you sell something the price is the same, so you want to track each individual sales subtotal value from your Google Ads campaign. So um, first things first, log into your Shopify store and go to, let me move this, go to settings and then go to checkout and scroll down until you get to um, additional scripts. This box lets you put conversion tags on the final like confirmation page and that's where we're going to put our Google Ads conversion tag. As you can see there's one here from another ad account that they were using. They're going to put in another one. Open up your Google Ads account Go to Tools and Settings, click on Conversions, that'll bring you to this page. Click the plus button, Website, Purchase, and just rename it if you want or leave it at that. Use a different value for each conversion. Um, I always just put like 10 bucks in our default value. We're going to edit some of this code. Um, so you're going to want to use this, but you can put whatever you want in here. If you have a really high ticket item, um, you know, make it, make it more, make it less. It doesn't really matter because that's not going to be used anyways. Um, we want to count one. We don't want to count every, or actually we do want to count every, excuse me. Um, one is if you're gathering leads. Every is for purchases. So that's good. Um, conversion windows, I mean, edit those if you want. I usually just leave them the same, including conversions, yes. Attribution model, it's, it's up to you on what you want to use. I usually use time decay um, or last click. We'll just, for this purposes, leave it there. And we'll go in here. So install the tag yourself. So Copy the, we're going to copy this tag and paste it here. And we're going to scroll down here and we're going to copy this and paste it right below that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to edit a little piece of that code so that it sends the conversion value back with the the order number and everything like that. So um, I'm going to. I have this snippet that I insert here. I'll put it in the comments section. Um, but basically, you just want to um, replace the value currency and transaction ID as it comes from Google um, with this. And this is specific for Shopify. Other platforms like WooCommerce um, have their own um, unique piece of code. But this is now going to send the subtotal value um, with the order number back to this Google Ads conversion tag. Hit save. And now this tag will fire on that thank you confirmation page um, anytime somebody makes a purchase from your Google Ads campaign. It's, it's as simple as that. That's, that's all you have to do. Um, once you finish up here, you'll see that purchase event. It'll say unverified. It'll say that until somebody um, hits that page. Eventually, it'll say no recent conversions. These will all change red. Um, the reason for these other ones is these are being pulled in automatically when you connect your Shopify account to AdWords. As soon as you do that here, um, we'll go back. Sorry. When you're in sales channels, Google, um, once you connect your Google Ads account with your Shopify store through this integration, it'll automatically populate all of these different events. I always, and you can see this one, including conversions, yes. This is the Google app, shopping app purchase conversion. Um, so I've gone back and forth with Google. Does this event track all purchase events from Google ads? And I haven't gotten a clear answer from them, which is why I always create my own and install it on that confirmation page like I just showed you. And then I come in here and I turn this one off so that it doesn't report in our um, conversions column. And every time I've done this, I've noticed I've noticed a couple things. So now I have it off no, and this purchase event is the only one that will be included in the conversion column and tracking values and everything. Um, every you'll, you'll notice as the campaign progresses, um, this the number that's reported under this purchase and this purchase are different. And I can't come up with an explanation for that other than that these purchase events are maybe only coming from the Google Shopping app or not coming just in general. Like if somebody if somebody goes um, to your website from a Google text ad, 
an expanded text or responsive search ad and they make a purchase, I'm not convinced that this one is picking that up. Whereas I know this one, because I embedded it myself on that thank you page, confirmation page, it's gonna pick up everything that comes from Google, search ads, shopping ads, etc. So that's my only suggestion um, to do that. Everything else I leave the same. Um, it, it's, you know, add to carts and everything like that. Again, I'm not sure if these are only add to carts that are coming from those shopping ads or, that sh or the shopping section on Google. Um, but at the end of the day, the most, the thing I'm most concerned about is purchases. And I found this to be the best way of tracking it from your Google efforts overall. Now, if you're only running a shopping campaign, you're not doing a regular search campaign, um, then perhaps this one um, alone is fine. It takes two seconds to install this one. And if anything, you can run a test, compare the two, let it run for a few weeks. Um, if you get, you know, uh, 10 conversions from your shopping uh, from your shopping campaign and, and five conversions from your search campaign, just kind of compare the numbers here and see like, um, you know, does this say 15 total purchases and this only says 10? That'll give you some insight. That's been my experience in the past, so I wanted to show you um, both ways of doing it. Thanks so much for watching.